Welcome this morning to Some Good Seeds. Wayne Hathaway here with you on this Saturday morning. Uh, just so thankful again to be sharing together with you. Uh, just as some incredible passages for today's reading. Uh, 1 Samuel 25 and 26, Psalm 63 and Matthew chapter 9. Uh, there's a couple of things that cause these passages to interact. Uh, that's one of the wonders of scripture is that we just find things uh, one place revealed and then in another place substantiated, all those kind of things that just give testimony to the, to the validity of the word of God. Uh, Jesus speaking in, in Matthew chapter 10, verse 4, uh, scripture says, but Jesus knowing their thoughts said, why do you think evil in your hearts? Here's just another instance of Jesus showing who he was. How can anyone know what someone else is thinking, their thoughts? We can speculate about what people are thinking, but to actually know their thoughts is completely impossible. But Jesus did that, and it displayed one of the characteristics that are exclusively uh, owned by God himself, and that is omniscience, that is knowing all things. And this, this is just so incredible, just a simple little verse. Uh, but to show that he was, in fact, who he said he was, he goes on to display his omnipotence, his power by healing people with all sorts and manners of sicknesses and diseases. And he does that at times with just a word, other times with just a touch, but he shows who he is over and over again. The incredible thing about all this is that the religious leaders said uh, and believed that the Messiah was going to come and hear Jesus is doing the very things that scripture said Messiah would do. But yet, what did the Jewish leaders do? Well, they rejected him. They would not believe that, that he was, in fact, who he said he was. And still today, people, people do the same thing. Uh, they hear and see the proofs of the word of God, and yet they still refuse to believe. They choose, rather, to believe the lie of Satan and suffer the consequences for their actions, just like I mentioned, remember, uh, the, the cohesiveness, the interaction of places, how they, you see one thing someplace and then it's substantiated in another. Well, in chapter 25 of First Samuel, we read about Nabal who rejected the word of God, who wouldn't have anything to do with it. When, what were the consequences? Well, it cost him his life. And people today do that same thing. And there will be no Abigail to intercede for them and the result of their wickedness will be revealed. They will be cast, the scripture says, into outer darkness where there will be weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. Well, the good news of the gospel is this. That's totally unnecessary. If we will, if people will, as scripture says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, they will be saved. Well, what does that mean? It means to believe on him means that he is God incarnate, that he uh, was pre-existent, that he came into this world as a babe, grew up as a man, lived a sinless life, was crucified, was buried, dead and buried, and on the third day rose from the dead just as he said he would. And now he sits at the right hand of God interceding for all of his children. If we will believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, we will be saved. I'm so thankful for the good news of the gospel because to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ means eternal life. It means heaven in the future, uh, not hell, but heaven. And so I pray today that each one of you who is hearing this today will, if you haven't, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. And for those of us who know the Lord, let us continue to proclaim the good news of the gospel that uh, though we have failed, though we have sinned, there has been an atoning sacrifice made so that we might live. And that is through the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ and the hope of his return. Amen. May the Lord richly bless you today.